couple of years back I had these windows made by a local joinery firm who painted them the wrong colour. I'm not going to go into why but it still hurts. I've had this window and about four others stuck in the garage for the last two years whilst I worked out what to do with them and also because I had more pressing jobs to do. But now this window needs to go in here as part of the kitchen renovation and I need to sort out that paint colour. So in today's video I'm going to tackle this with a product I've never used before, Zinza All Coat. This isn't a paid for video, I bought this from a Johnson's Decorator Centre. But I think you'll find today's video really interesting if like me you've got some windows to paint for whatever reason, you're renovating them, they've gone rotten, whatever. Because I'm hoping this product is going to be incredibly easy to use and effective whilst cutting out a lot of the faff that you associate with this sort of job. But as usual I'll also be talking about a few problems I've had along the way. Now you're probably thinking why am I bothering using something like Zinza All Coat when I could just use a traditional satin or gloss top coat like this and in fact this is what I have been using to protect other exterior woodwork. Well there's a few reasons for that. The first reason is that if you're going to use a paint like this in an ideal world you're meant to remove all paint and varnish treating the bare wood with preservative if necessary followed by a primer undercoat before applying a couple of coats of the gloss or satin. Now that involves a lot of prep work. And I started to hear good things about this recently, in particular the fact that the water-based version, they do a solvent-based version as well, but the water-based version can be painted directly onto existing gloss surfaces. Now a lot of people will be saying, why didn't you use a solvent-based version that's bound to be more durable? Well, interestingly, Zinza's little pocket guide, which I've had for years, it's fantastic. It sets out all the different paints and their applications. Not sure you can get this on the website at the moment. I did have a look just now, but anyway, it doesn't say anything in the all coat satin and gloss solvent based exterior about painting directly onto existing gloss surfaces. But the water based version on the face of it has loads of advantages. It's scrubbable, it's flexible, it's tintable meaning you can mix it like I have to a particular colour. It will resist severe weather. It has a one hour recoat time which is particularly important for me given I'm up against it at the moment with all the jobs I've got to do. It's self priming which means you don't need to put an undercoat down with it. It contains a biocide and as I said it can be applied to gloss without sanding. So for someone who doesn't enjoy painting or that all-important prep work which is so important for a successful job this was pretty attractive to me. There was a little bit of work to do though before I could get started. The windows were covered in dust grime and who knows possibly also a bit of bat excrement so I hit them with a bucket of warm water and some sif. I then decided to give the gloss surface a light sand because although it's not necessary I wanted to give the paint every possible chance of adhering well to that surface. And after all this a final wipe down with some sugar soap wipes just to remove any dust and remaining grease that there might be and I was ready to get painting. If you haven't already got one get yourself a cyclone mixing paddle. It's the most effective way to mix paint both old and new that I've ever discovered. There'll be a link in the description below the vid. I thought I'd decant what I was using into a separate pot as this helps to minimise the paint you get on the rim of the tin and prevents contaminants from the surface going back into the tin when you dip the brush in. I just want to show you how important brushes are. This is not a bad brush, it's from Axis Decor. Um, Onyx series but it's too hard for this paint. So I've switched to this Wooster. These are all just things I had lying around. Wooster Silver Tip. And ah, oh, the difference is just a lovely soft brush and the paint goes on with this so much better. So choice of brush is very important guys. And you can now also see the colour that we wanted. Basically the reason for the colour difference is when we ordered our first set of replacement windows for the 1970s windows we inherited with this cottage, we went with this green colour. We then decided we didn't like it and started repainting the windows and when I submitted the order for another four windows from the same company I made it very clear that we changed the colour but they just completely ignored my instructions and had a tin of the old paint in the workshop and just used that. So that's why I'm having to repaint these windows. Coverage isn't brilliant I must say but I think the important thing with this first coat is just to get it on and treat it like a primer obviously being careful not to lay it on too thick. Repainting existing windows you always have that slight sort of dilemma about what to do about the glazing bars which are in this case siliconed in. Now I have in the past removed all the silicon so I can paint right up to the window 
which itself has been a bit of a pain to do. So what I'm doing now is just literally painting up to the silicon because of course you can't paint silicon it doesn't most silicons the paint doesn't adhere to it whereas tripolymer products like this can be over painted just something to be aware of when considering what to use for your project but as you'll see with this amazing paintbrush you can get a phenomenal edge i'm just going as close to it as i can right now and now watch this How good is that? And that's only the primer coat. And then it was just onto the underside of the hardwood sill. I think it's probably mahogany or something like that. So that was a primer coat done. And as I moved on to coat two, the window was starting to look pretty good. But as you'll know, if you watch my videos regularly, I like to show what happens warts and all. And at this point, I hit a bit of a problem. You know, you have one of those crushing moments on a job where you just think, oh no, I've just been trimming a bit of um, silicon in the corner here which wasn't put on very well. I'm just gonna to have to re-tidy that up a bit when we come to, before we come to put the, um, the window back on. But in the course of doing that, I realized that some of the paint was a little bit, laid on a bit heavy last night and it hasn't set properly. So then you wipe it off and this happens. And then you get your finger out and you start scratching. And you think, geez, is this actually adhering to the gloss at all? So, this is the big worry I've got, that this entire window frame that I've painted is basically potentially a bit of a disaster. I mean, in a sense, I'm quite glad that I keyed the paint before I started because it just doesn't look like that paint has attached to the gloss at all. But anyway, I'll feather that edge down and uh, repaint it because you know what else can I do but with the whole window painted I'm not going to start scratching at my nails to see whether it comes off or not so I suppose the ultimate test will be to see how well the, the, um, the window weathers over the next few years can't weather any worse than the other ones that I've had <laughs> installed <laughs> which as you can see here have failed this one literally failed about three months after installing it. And look here how the sun has completely rotted away the CT1 sealant. I won't be using that again. There's more to come on the peeling issue, which I'll come back to shortly. But in the meantime, what could I do but press on with the final coat? With the painting complete, I can move on to removing that old window. I've done at least one video on window replacement, so I won't go into too much detail today. But suffice to say, it's a case of removing the old glass, then the frame. I then needed to tidy up the brickwork beneath the window and apply a watered down coat of PVA as I'll be putting a render bead in shortly below the sill. The old windows didn't have sills, which we decided to install as this side of the house is south facing and gets pummeled by the weather. And so the Tyrolean needed notching to make way for the sill. What I then like to do is precisely position the window with the aid of a spirit level tape measure and glazing packers and then fix it in position with expanding foam. If you haven't already got one, get a foam gun as it gives you so much more control than the spray cans that come with a nozzle. And make sure it's a non-stick gun. My old gun was a nightmare, even though I cleaned it regularly with the acetone spray. Whereas this non-stick version, you simply screw on a new can when the old one's finished and it hasn't blocked up once. And only when this is set, do I then mechanically fix with frame fixings. Because if you do it before the window's set, it, it can slightly wander. Some people hide these behind the hinges, but I prefer them to be more centrally positioned on the frame, as it's so easy to fill the holes with two-part wood filler. The last job was to fill the gaps. Again, some people would use a frame sealant for this, but I prefer the old school method of sand and cement. It's worked really well for me over the years, hasn't shrunk or cracked, and can be painted over for a seamless finish. Four parts sand to one part cement, and I add a waterproof admixture to weatherproof and act as a plasticizer. And this is crucial, as I have a new favorite gadget, this mortar gun. I wish I'd bought this earlier. It's made jobs like this effortless, although you do need to make sure the mix is the right consistency. The gun does block up when the water squeezed out the mix. And as I said, plasticizer is a crucial agent in making the mortar soft enough to squeeze through the nozzle. All that remained was to screw the windows back into position on the frame with a little bit of help from DIY. Wife. And back to that peeling issue, when I took off this very good super low tack pro deck masking tape, a small amount of paint came off in a couple of places. So let's sum up and try and draw a few conclusions from this whole project. So I mentioned these problems I'd had on my community tab. 
to see what you all thought. And the response was unanimously that all coat is actually a great product. Lots of things might have contributed to the peeling, like not giving the paint long enough to cure. Zinza themselves say it takes up to seven days. Possibly painting in less than ideal temperatures. It was about between 12 and 14 degrees whilst I was doing all this painting. And perhaps a little bit of localized silicon contamination, particularly around the corners near those glazing beads. Common theme is that sanding is a really good idea, even though they say it doesn't need to be done. And in fact, they acknowledge this to JBR. Thanks for your comment on that. And priming probably isn't a bad idea either. Also backed up by MFA Music, a painter and decorator. So you could say in that case, why didn't I use the solvent-based version? As indeed MFA Music suggested. I guess because it's recoatable in 16 hours compared to the one hour with the water version. But if you're looking at long time durability, 16 hours really isn't a big sacrifice to make in the grand scheme of things. Unless I suppose like me, you were painting to a deadline. But Robert came back and said he painted his Victorian fascia boards with this stuff directly over the gloss without sanding and six years later it's still going strong. Alison mentioned Phil Beckworth and how he's a pro decorator who's tested all sorts of paints on doors and the all coat actually came out pretty good. And whilst John Barry shared my experience at nightclub people urged us both to stick with it as it's in his words a very impressive product that needs about seven to ten days to cure. And finally at Paul 6337 said it chipped easily for a few days and then set like freaking concrete. So a massive thanks to you all out there for commenting. I find the feedback from you all on my community page so valuable. Keep up the good work. So if you are going to prime this surface what do you use? Well Ollie and Delphine's tip is to use Ticarilla Otex Primer. I haven't used it myself but Ticarilla is a fantastic brand. But Caparol Haft Primer is universally recommended on my channel and in the comments section. And in fact Paul, a professional decorator painter on my discord forum says this is the best primer he's ever used. And Johnny Motel 99 goes on to also endorse that in the comments below the community post. And let's not forget Zinza Bin which is probably still the best primer for adhering well to tricky surfaces. But these things are always complicated and a massive contributing factor to this is probably the fact that these windows are soft wood. I haven't ever had the money to invest in hardwood windows and I still can't if I'm honest. But I still think this shouldn't matter if you use the right paint. For example I rebuilt this dorm up six years ago and this was constructed with a tantalized softwood and some old marine ply, maybe, I don't know whether it's marine actually, some old ply I found lying about in the garage. Now at the time I went to the efforts of painting it with a three-part system. I primed it and then used a flexible undercoat and finally a flexible gloss from Johnstones. And six years on it's looking as good as it did the day I finished it. Although it does need a bit of a clean and I have occasionally had to touch up the joints on those fascia boards. So I'm going to leave you today with a bit of a teaser. I hate painting as you now know. And for my new front door, which is also soft wood, I've gone for a completely different approach which does away entirely with primers and undercoats, which I'm hoping is going to revolutionize the ongoing maintenance. And what's the Wonder product? Well, it's this stuff from Treetex and there'll be a video coming up on my channel soon. So massive thanks for watching today. Details of everything I've talked about will be as usual in the description below the video, which you can access by clicking on the usual show more links. And last but not least, if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icons so you get notified of every video I upload. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.